from the KSL Broadcast House, this is Sunday Edition with Doug Wright. And good morning and welcome to Sunday Edition. In about two weeks now, Utahns will be casting their vote in the Utah Republican primary. That's on June 28th. Ballots have been mailed out and already are hitting people's mailboxes. Today, we're going to take a look at what you need to know about your ballot before the primary election day, plus how the Utah Republican Party is shaping up after the debates earlier this month. But first, a new poll out this week by the Deseret News Hinckley Institute of Politics showing how Utah's Republican Senate candidates would stack up against independent challenger Evan McMullen. We're delighted to talk with our first guest today, and Morgan Lyon Cotty. Thank you so much for joining us from the Hinckley Institute of Politics. And we were chatting a little bit about this poll, and it's very interesting to see the numbers and maybe even how they've evolved. You were mentioning to me and reminding me of about a similar poll in March. What has changed in the last couple of months? Yeah, so for this current poll, we stacked up, as you said, each of the Republicans in the primary against Evan McMullen. But back in March, when Kel Weston was still in the race, and there was the debate about what the Democratic Party would do, whether they join the Evan McMullen coalition or back that Democratic candidate, we decided, let's poll to see what might happen in November. Um, and so we did that head to head, and we saw what you often see, the Republican way out ahead, the Democrat trailing the independent candidate then right. behind. Uh, but when we polled again without Kel Weston in there, we see that it's basically a statistical tie now between Evan McMullen and Mike Lee. And McMullen picked up a lot of support from each of those uh, sort of across the board ideological coalitions. I've, I've always over the years enjoyed talking with the folks from the Hinckley Institute of Politics. You have such a unique vantage point. And how unprecedented is this to have Democrats not really fielding a candidate and throwing their support against uh, you know, with an independent and against a sitting senator. It is, just as you said, it is unprecedented. We haven't seen that in our state's history. And other municipalities or localities do have what they call jungle primaries, where the top two candidates right. go ahead. So you can see two Republicans or two Democrats on the final ballot. And in effect, that is what we are going to see. We're going to see two people who are right of center facing off in that general election, which some people are really cheering for. They think we're going to have this competitive election, and others are saying, we don't know if this is so great that we don't even have a member of one of our major parties on that ballot. For Becky Edwards and Ali Isom, I know them both, and mm -hmm. it's been very interesting to watch this. Is there any raised eyebrows or surprise that perhaps they are not faring better? It, although in a head-to-head -head yeah. on a couple, you yeah. know, the, the, the numbers change. But I've looked at some of the polls over the months and sometimes have been a little surprised at, at how low the numbers have been for both of them. Yeah, it's always so difficult to unseat an incumbent, especially one that has pretty good name recognition like Senator Lee. Uh, and that's what we've seen a little bit. Becky Edwards has always been that number two candidate in the polls and in um, convention. And she does have more years in the legislature, a little bit more name ID, um, and then Ali Isom trailing. With these head-to-heads with Evan McMullen, it was so interesting to see that with Becky Edwards, it was basically right. a tie again. It was a tie. And then McMullen actually led ISIM, which was really interesting. Let's talk about the actual numbers. 41% for Senator Lee, Evan McMullen, 37% other, that mm -hmm. category, at 4%, but the don't knows. Right. Almost 20. Yeah. So th th that's a real factor here. It is. That means one in five people that we polled have not made up their mind. And we often talk about that swing voter, that undecided voter, and how they can shift an election. We saw the importance of that in 2020. A lot of those suburban voters uh, that swung and, um, in effect, really shifted things for uh, Joe Biden, according to a lot of the analysis. That may be really crucial here as well. Uh, as I said, we saw McMullen pick up 
Republicans, Democrats, and undecideds between March and May in our poll. We have to wait and see what happens between May and November. What is the dialogue? How are Utahns going to view this conservative Republican and then this more moderate Republican? I've not seen the actual raw poll and uh, you know the, the presentation of it, and sometimes there are additional uh, questions mm -hmm. that are asked. Were there any indicators from those who did label themselves as undecided what it would take to make them decided? We should ask that in our next poll. We didn't ask it this time around, but when we look at those at those cross tabs, we can't we do ask how where are you not just with party but ideologically. And we mm -hmm. see that those very conservatives somewhat conservatives are just staunchly with Mike Lee. And that's always been his base. Um, his approvals always look a little low overall, but then when you look at his base, he has them. Yeah. So the thing for Mike Lee, he has to convince people that to come on board, that he will represent them. And then Evan McMullen, uh, I think a lot, what a lot of people are seeing is you were the anti-Trump vote in 2016. How are you going to how are you going to convince people not just to vote for you, but to show up, to turn right. in those ballots? Every time we talk about this race, I remind our viewers that we have extended numerous invitations to Senator Lee, none of which he has accepted. We have offered all kinds of flexibility, yeah. basically whatever it takes, because mm -hmm. we really do want to be fair. But we've had Ali on, we've had Becky on, we've had Evan on, and I uh, regret that uh, we haven't had Senator Lee on the program, but it's not because we have not tried and extended invitations. Let's look ahead. I mean, the, the odds are Senator Lee is going to come out of the Republican primary, right. and he will be running against Evan McMullen. I've noticed in the past, in, in past races, especially where there is uh, someone of national uh, notoriety, let's put it that way, where some of the outside packs and so on will really come to rally behind them. I mean, millions and millions of dollars have been spent. What are you anticipating? This will be our, our final question here, but what are you anticipating from the national effort to keep Senator Lee in his seat? I think we will probably see that same type of effort, whether uh, there was a Democrat in the race or just an independent. Uh, once you are, on, are in office, you have that great luxury of having the support of the National Party and other entities supporting you. So I think we will see, still see that PAC involvement. We'll see it's easier, perhaps, for Senator Lee to be raising those big dollars. Um, and we, it may be just as negative and... Um, interesting as yeah. it would have been even with a Democrat. One, I mentioned final question. Let's hear it. But there's always a final, final Let's question. Is another poll planned for the field and when will it hit? We are actually entering the field in just a couple days. That's one of the wonderful partnerships we have with Deseret News is that we poll every month. So more interesting things will soon be revealed. Morgan, I so appreciate you joining us today. Thanks. On Sunday edition. Always a great, great pleasure. We'll take a brief break and we will come right back on Sunday edition. So stay with us. Utah's Republican Party candidates have been taking to the stages this month for debates ahead of Utah's June 28th Republican primary. One of the most high profile races, of course, this year is for the Senate seat currently held by Republican Senator Mike Lee. He faces GOP challengers Ali Eisen and Becky Edwards. We're pleased today that we can talk with the GOP chair a little bit about the debates and how things are shaping up for the Republican Party in the election of 2022 and the party chair joins us now, Carson Jorgensen. Carson, thank you so much for joining us on Sunday edition this morning. Ah, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be on. Let's just review what has been happening over the last little while. There's always consternation and even some controversy, everybody wanting to host or stage the uh, various debates. How do you feel it's shaken out for the candidates? because you represent all of the Republican candidates, not just to select one or two or three out there. You're in charge of, of everybody. How have we done so far? How have your candidates done so far? You know, I, I think we've done really well. What, what we wanted to do was create an atmosphere and an environment 
where all of the uh, candidates felt like they were going to get a fair shake and where they were going to get a great shot to be showcased. And that's really what we wanted to provide. And some candidates felt they weren't going to get that with the debate commission. I know that's where a lot of the controversy is uh, swirling from. But but I wanted to make sure that all the candidates, because it doesn't do us any good to have a debate with one candidate or two candidates on the stage. We need to have all of them. We need the incumbents to be there. We we really wanted to create that environment, and we went out of our way to make sure that we provided that so that all of the Utah Republicans who will be voting in this upcoming primary and who are voting right now um, got a real good chance to see the candidates that they're voting for. It always bothers me, too, when and I've hosted a couple of debates on my old radio show this way where only one person shows up, and it always seems awkward. It, it always is, is difficult, and I think it's a disservice to the constituents. I think it's a disservice to the voters. You know, the debate commission, maybe we could talk about that for just a moment. I'm, I'm quite familiar. I have conducted some of the debates for the debate commission, and I've always found their process to be fairly pristine. And you look at the people that represent uh, Utah on the debate commission, was there a particular grievance or was there a problem with a proposed moderator. I, I think of the fine Republicans who serve on the commission. I think of the fine Democrats. I think of people, everything in between. W was there a particular issue from the Republican Party or from some of your candidates regarding the debate commission? Yeah, so how this all started was the debate commission came out and said, these are the days that we're doing the debates, either be there or don't. We're not going to accommodate. We're not going to do anything that way you're either there or you're not and and that was a problem because a lot of a couple of them were out of the country a couple of them couldn't accommodate that into their schedule and they went to the debate commission and said hey it's not going to work for us they said well that's too bad we're going to leave an empty podium with your name on it if you don't show up and and that was upsetting to a lot of them and and for us and the way i look at this is this is a republican party primary we are choosing a Republican candidate to run in the general election. And we should have a say in our party platform and, and the things that we vet our candidates on. We should have a say in how we do that and who best exemplifies that and the line of questionings that go into that. And as you can see from our, our debates that we hosted, these questions were tough. Like There were tough issues that Utahns wanted to know the things that they wanted to see and the things that matter to Utahns. And those are the things we wanted to showcase. We wanted to highlight those things. And we wanted to make sure that that was done with the debate commission. And when I reached out to them and said, hey, this is what we'd like to do. We'd like to have some kind of a say. We'd like to have a little bit of input. It was absolutely not. We're an independent organization. And I said, as are we. And so we decided to go forward with our own debates and create that environment where all the candidates would show up. Does the fact that the election is funded by Utah taxpayers, does that factor in uh, to the decision making as well with both the debate commission and with the, the party? I, we all recognize that it certainly is the Republican primary, but the people of the state of Utah are paying for it. Right. No, that it is the public paying for it. But but again, this goes back to a lot of inter-party arguments. You know, SB 54, we allow people, we used to choose our own candidates. We used to let the party choose our own candidates through the convention process and move those on. Well, with the when we brought about SB 54, this was the compromise. Well, we would let candidates onto our ballots via the signature process. And, and so now those signature candidates are allowed to be in the primary mm -hmm. where they weren't before. And that was the compromise. And that's what the taxpayers are getting. And um, that that really was that compromise. And some still disagree with it. So when it comes to this, I don't think it has anything to do with it, in my opinion, that this is still the Republican Party choosing our candidate to run in that general election. Let's talk about the Senate race. Uh, that uh, not only has Utah focus, but it also has national focus. And we just talked with the Hinckley Institute of Politics. It's unprecedented what, what is happening in the Senate race right now with Evan McMullen running as an independent, having the Democratic Party you know, basically not fielding a candidate and supporting Evan McMullen. Uh, Senator Lee, uh, let, let's talk about the party's viewpoint of this race and what is likely to unfold. I am assuming that tons of uh, national money from the National Republican Party and other PACs will be flowing into Utah. I'd just be curious on your take on the, the race. 
No, absolutely. You're going to see an unprecedented amount of money flow to Utah for this race. And like I say, we got to get through the primary first. Um, the numbers are leaning Mike's away. So let's just, for the sake of numbers, say that that's how it goes. Um, you're going to see the National Senate committees. You're going to see the National Republican Party. You're going to see a lot of money flow Mike Lee's way, if that's how this turns out or either of our candidates. But what you're also going to see is a lot of Democratic money now flow towards Evan McMullen because they have opened that gate. And you're going to see a lot of this outside of state money, and this is going to turn into a major spending race. And, and that's just not what we need. And that creates, I mean, once again, it, this is Utah politics. We should keep it here. But, but we're going to have to go outside the state to find money because you're going to see tens of millions of dollars be thrown at this race because the Democrats elected not to support their own candidate. This is going to be unique. Everybody agrees on that. And again, the word unprecedented keeps coming up. And Carson, I thank you for spending this time with us on Sunday edition. I, I want you to personally know that we have extended uh, innumerable well, that's an overstatement. Many, many invitations to Senator Lee to join us on this program. And I just wanted you as the party chair to know that because we have had everybody else on the show. I appreciate your yeah. willingness to join us. And if Senator Lee decides that he'd like to spend a little time on Sunday edition, we will bend over backwards to accommodate him. Sounds great. I'll, I'll put in a good word for you. But thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate what you're doing. And, and we look forward to this season. Thank you very much for joining us on Sunday Edition. We'll take a brief break and we will come right back. Stay with us. How do we cast our ballot? Ballots for Utah's primary election have been mailed out and uh, they're out across the state. We received ours just the other day at our home. Last year was a redistricting year, which means you may see different races on your ballot than before. The Weber County Clerk, I understand this is Clerk Auditor, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. All right, Clerk Auditor, you know, Ricky Hatch is here with us to talk about what we all need to do and how we can properly fill out our ballot and rest assured that things are fine. Let's talk about that first and foremost. I was telling you off the air prior to starting this conversation, I had a friend today just going on and on about the boxes and boxes and boxes of ballots and the fraud. And I'm going, oh my goodness. And you had an interesting response. You said, how many times do we have to disprove this? Yeah, it's interesting because we're, you know, elections and government are run in, in the open, in the public, according to strict laws, uh, with full transparency, uh, with lots of audits and lots of security and video and everything, and yet people don't trust them, which is okay. We're, we're Americans. We're kind of right. just... Un we don't skeptical, trust government. Yeah. yeah. But if a movie comes out or a journalist from another state writes something, someone who we've never met, we instantly believe them. And my thought is, why don't we apply the same level of skepticism to movies and to articles and things like that <laughs> as we do to our government. Yeah. I think we just we just need to be care careful where we get our information. It is kind of amazing. We'll take things hook, line and sinker from a blogger or, you know, somebody who is uh, on a, a particular page or a streaming site. I know this was uh, now Governor Cox. He was always so frustrated when he was lieutenant governor because he's overall. That's one of the major responsibilities of the right. lieutenant governor is to assure that our elections are conducted fairly, properly and they're safe. Sound. And it used to drive him crazy. And fortunately, the boxes of ballots my friend was telling me about was not Utah. <laughs> so yeah. let's, let's talk about that. I, I heard on a debate, and it was uh, in the first congressional district debate on KSL radio this past week, I heard one of the candidates say, we have got to get back to voting in person. We've got to get back to paper ballots. We've got... And, is that even feasible in this day and age? And is there not a paper trail already, even the way we do it? Uh, you're right. We are fully on paper right now. Um, and it is feasible. But is it the best way? The best way is to take use of the technology that we have, but don't trust it. Audit it. And so I think Utah's come up with a really good model. We have a paper ballot, paper base that we can always go back and rerun if needed. We use technology for efficiency and control purposes. Computers are really good at counting. They're far yeah. better than humans, yeah. as long as you audit them. And so that's why in Utah we audit our machines before 
during and after each election, and more than just three times. Yeah, it's kind of amazing to me that we have to belabor this so often, but yet the, the, the misinformation is just swirling out there. But let's talk about the practicalities of voting the way we are going to vote this time. We've all received, many of us, uh, especially those who, whether they're Democrats and registered Republican or whatever, we're getting our ballots right now. And what are the do's and don'ts? What do we need to make sure we do and make sure we don't do? One of the most important thing is to make sure you sign that envelope before you seal it up. Uh, and make sure that envelope belongs to you because we check that signature through the unique control number that's on that envelope. So that's the most important thing is make sure you sign it. If you make a mistake on the ballot, you can correct it on the ballot and mark it in a way that a human would understand because mm -hmm. our machines will kick it out and they'll say, hey, something's wrong. I don't know what to do with this. And then right. we have teams that, that review that. So that's really the main thing. And then don't wait until the last minute. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to mail it through the Postal Service, it's got to be postmarked the day before Election Day. Don't miss that deadline because we can't accept them if it's, if it's postmarked after. Um, but we have tons of drop boxes all across the state that you can drop a ballot into. Um, and I just say, don't wait till the end. Do your research now, vet your candidates, and then make a good decision. I think it's important, as you mentioned, if somebody messes up the ballot, they, they do something, they go, whoops. You know, that's not the end of the world. That's right. It, it happens all the time where people spill on their ballots. We can give you a new one. But if it's just you accidentally voted for the wrong person, just exit out and put and circle the one that you want, we'll be able to identify that and record it correctly. Right. You mentioned the postmark. Uh, is this universal throughout the state or does it vary from county to county? It's universal. Uh, okay. You must have it postmarked the day before or you can drop it in a drop box up until uh, 8 p.m. on election day. Is there a website, is it uh, utah.gov, whatever, that will get us to where we can find a drop box in case we mess up? Yes, vote.utah.gov can give you all the information. You can also go to your local county clerk website. They have them all listed up there, uh, and you can always call your county clerk. They're, we're eager to give out the right information. I sure appreciate you joining us on the program today. Yeah. Ricky, thank you, you, you so bet. much. My pleasure. And thank you all for joining us for this episode of Sunday Edition. And we hope you'll join us next week. And music and the spoken word, that's coming up next. <laughs>